Good morning, City Revival. Welcome to Church at Home. And what a joy it is this morning to come together to celebrate once again the goodness of Jesus Christ and His reality. God is so good and God is so awesome. And we, are, we come even this morning just to expect God to do great things. We're doing a series of messages on faith. And as we do this series, I want you to believe God for the miraculous. I want you to believe God for breakthroughs. I want you to believe God for divine intervention. Even as we do this series of messages, God, God's going to position us for new and greater things. You shall, you shall perceive it. You shall know it. God will make roads in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So are you ready for the word of God? Are you ready to receive the word of God? Are you ready to believe the word of God? Let's look to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we just want to present God the word to you. God, we know the word is living and powerful. We know, God, that even this morning, God, that your word is the, is, it's, it's the word that brings forth change in our life. And this morning, we ask, God, that you will give us a ears to hear, eyes to see, a heart to obey you. And Jesus, we pray, Father God, oh God, that your word will fuel faith and cause us even this morning to believe you for greater things. Oh, Jesus, we love you. Anoint each one of us. Anoint every person that's watching and hearing this message. And God, we pray, God, that even as a result of this message, God, that we will get into the next level of our relationship with you. We thank you in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen and Amen. God declares in Mark chapter 10, verse 27, with God, all things are possible. In Ephesians 3.20, the Bible says, He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. These are faith, these are power statements, word statements. I declare every day that with God, all things are possible today. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly today in your life, in our lives. The Bible says, if you can believe in Mark 9.23, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. There is no impossibility in God. The impossibility in us is when we do not exercise the faith that God demands from us. And our journey in life is a journey of faith. We've got to believe God. We've got even this morning to live a life of faith. God is looking for men and women of faith. The men, of, the men and women... The great men and women were women of faith. Come on, look at Abraham's life. And next week, we will look at Abraham's life. Look at Elijah. Come on. Where are the people that will call the fire of God? Where are the people that will confront the religion? Where are the people that will confront the prophets of Baal? Come on, God is looking for Elijah's. God is looking for Nehemiah's to rise up. God is looking for Ruth's and Esther's to rise up. God is looking for people. God always delights when you and I dare to believe God. When you and I bold faith, courageous faith. You see what God's looking for in your life and in my life? Is that we will be faith-filled and not fearful. As we look at the world today, if there is a predominant emotion and attitude that's controlled the world, it is fear. And fear has got a few friends. Doubt, worry, and unbelief. And, and you know it has you know it is yes we are we are undergoing a COVID pandemic but we are also undergoing a fear pandemic. Fear has crippled people's life. Fear has affected people's life. The fear of failure, the fear of sickness, the fear of the future, uh, the fear of you know finances, the fear of jobs, and you know and people you know people's emotional, spiritual, and mental energy is being consumed by this fear. It is affected, it has brought sicknesses and it is destroying people's life. And so each one of us this morning, come on, we need to choose faith over fear. We need to, even this morning, we need to move from fear to faith. And I want to challenge each one of you today. Oh, he who has ears, let him hear what God is saying through his word today. Choose faith over fear. Church, you, it's a choice that we make. You see, God has given us many commandments in the Bible. In Mark 11, 22, the Bible says, have faith in God. In Mark chapter 5, verse 36, 
Do not be afraid. Only believe. Mark 9, 23. If you can believe, all things are possible. These are commands. These are commands that you and I need to obey. God has also given us commands. Don't fear. If there is one commandment that is, that is uh, so frequently repeated in the word of God, is fear not. Do not be afraid. When Jesus was in the storm with the disciples in Mark chapter 4, what did Jesus say? Why are you fearful? Why don't you have faith? Why is there no faith? In Mark 5, 36, Jesus said, Do not be afraid. Only believe. Fear not. You know, Jesus, the scriptures also say that we don't doubt. In James chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, the Bible says, If you and I doubt, what happens? You know, the Bible says that we are like a wave being tossed up and down and we will not receive anything. Uh, we will not receive anything. Why? Because God's principle is faith. If you and I want to please God, it is faith. If you and I, come on, if you and I want to see destiny fulfilled, it's faith. If you and I want to position ourselves to receive the miraculous, it is faith. And we cannot allow these faith hinderers, this, we cannot allow these faith killers like here, doubt. The Bible says in, uh, in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, have no anxiety, don't be anxious. The Bible says don't walk in unbelief. You know, there's a sad, you know, you know one of the saddest scripture, as I look at this scripture, uh, you know, where, where Jesus said, you know, where Jesus, you know, the Bible says Jesus was even, uh, Jesus was in his hometown and he could not do anything because of their unbelief. Isn't that sad? Jesus, the almighty God, Jesus, the all-powerful God was in his own hometown and he couldn't do anything because of, of their unbelief. Did Jesus' power change? No, Jesus' power didn't change. What changed was the people's, you know, the people's faith. You know, they couldn't believe. And, and you know, in Hebrews chapter 3, again, the Bible says, you know, uh, you need, as you look at Hebrews chapter 3, the Bible speaks about the evil heart of unbelief. And the children of Israel couldn't enter into the promised land because of unbelief. Come on, church, we need to deal. You and I, we need to deal with our fear. And all its friends, we need to deal with doubt. We need to deal with worry. We need to deal with unbelief. Why? Because if you don't deal, it is a battle of control of our life. Choose faith over fear. Choose faith over fear. Come on, church. Whoever, wherever you are, I say this to you. Choose faith over fear. Stop fearing and start believing. As you look at the scriptures, we're going to look at a portion of scripture. Uh, the portion in Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 23. Jesus uh, was with the multitudes and, and Jesus gave an instruction to the disciples to get into the boat and go to the other side. And he went up to the mountain to pray on his own. And then as the Bible says, there was a great storm, there was the great wind and Jesus saw this. And at about three, you know, at, at about the fourth watch, that's between three to six o'clock in the morning, Jesus walks on the water and comes to the disciples. Why? Because he wants to help. Jesus is always there to help us. Jesus was always there. He keeps an eye upon us and he's always wanting to see his will fulfilled in our lives. And as Jesus walks, you know, the disciples, when they saw him, they were just fearful. They thought he was a ghost. And look at what Jesus said to them. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 27, immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer. Look, listen to this. It is I. Do not be afraid. Jesus spoke to them. What did Jesus say to them? Be of good cheer. Be joyful. Be courageous. It is I. Do not be afraid. So how do you move from fear to faith? How do you how do we choose uh, faith over a uh, faith over a fear? It is a journey that you and I, it is a conscious journey. I want to challenge you. It is a conscious journey that we have got to take every moment of our life. Come on, each one of us, we've got to be intentional in this. Why? Because it's natural to flow into fear. But we got to be intentional to walk in faith and trust Jesus. As you look at Matthew chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus said, It is I. 
His presence. Come on. It is His presence that brings joy. It is His presence that removes fear. It is His presence that destroys fear. And so for us to move from fear to faith, come on church, we've got to stay connected with Jesus. We've got to stay connected. Come on, we've got to stay connected with Christ. We've got to stay focused on Christ. You see, faith focuses on Jesus. Fear focuses on everything else. It disconnects us from Jesus. Faith comes out of a relationship with Christ. Fear comes out as a, a result of a disconnection from Christ. Faith puts its uh, faith puts its trust in God. It depends on God. Fear does not depend on God. Fear does everything possible to cut us away from God so that we will look and become self-reliant and look at the circumstances depending on ourselves. And so this is a battle that's going on in our life continuously. Uh, Jesus himself said, this is a battle that you and I will experience this. Uh, you and I are experiencing this battle. And so we've got to stay connected with Christ. How do you move from fear to faith? Stay connected with Christ. Come on, look at some of the scriptures. Isaiah 41, verse 10, the Bible says, Fear not, for I am with you. In Psalm 23, uh, verse 4, a familiar Psalm, Psalm 23, the Bible says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. And in Isaiah 43, if you look at verses 2 and 3, and I've quoted Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19, that do not remember the former things. It's a prophetic word over your life, prophetic word over my life, over us, over us as a church. Do not remember the former things, not consider the things of old. Behold, I do a new thing. Shall you not know it? I will make roads in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. God's doing new things. God's doing great things and miraculous things. But you and I must understand that if the whole process of the prophetic word is linked to his presence, it is linked to his presence. And in Isaiah 43, verses 2 and 3, the Bible speaks about you may go through uh, the floods, you know, it, uh, I will be with you. Uh, the water shall not overflow you. The fire shall not burn you. Why? Because I am the Lord your God. Come on, church, we got to stay connected with Christ. Fear will do everything possible to disconnect it with Christ. But you see, faith locks itself. Our faith is something that locks itself with God. It is, a, it is a result of a relationship with God. As you look at Matthew chapter 14, verse 20, uh, as you look at Matthew chapter 14, verses 28 and 29, what do we see? First, we've got to stay connected with Christ. And as you look at verse 28, 28, the Bible says, Then Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And what does Jesus say? Jesus said, Come. And when, when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Another great principle in how we can move from fear to faith. And the Bible says here, we got to act on his word. You see, fear, it is a battle for focus. Our life is a battle for focus. What we focus on, we will become. Because what we focus will grow in us. And what grows in us, we become. And so it's a battle for focus. Faith focuses on Christ. Fear focuses on the problem and our ability, you know, and, and stirs our, you know, uh, focuses on self-reliance and not on God reliance. And here, as you look at this, you know, faith always acts on the word of God. Remember the power mix formula from Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. The word plus faith equals power. Word plus faith equals miracle. Word plus faith equals healing. Word plus faith equals breakthrough. And faith acts on the word. And here, as Peter looked at Jesus, Peter said to Jesus, God, you command me. God, you command me to come out of the water. And Jesus gave a one-word sermon. And what was that sermon? Come. Come. And what does Peter do? Peter steps out, exercises faith, and, you know, steps out of the, on the water and heads towards Jesus. 
And for the first time in history and ever in, in history, a man walked on water as he obeyed the word of Jesus. You've got to act on the word. Each one of us, God has given us promises. People of God, listen to this. His promises comes out of his presence and demands our obedience. Let me say this again. His promises comes out of his presence and demands our obedience. Faith focuses on the word of God. But fear, what does fear do? Fear will cause us to focus on his problems. And so each one of us this morning, you know, we need to cry out to God and get and say, God, speak the word. And I will step out in faith and act on your word. Speak the word over my situation. Speak the word over the, the things that I'm struggling with. Speak the word over the battles that I'm going through. Speak the word. Oh, God, give me a promise. And God, I will step out in faith and I will act on your word. You got to act on his word. How do we move from fear? To faith, we've got to act on the word. And then in verse 30, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 14, verse 30, listen to this. But, I, but, but when Peter saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning and beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. So how do you move from fear to faith? How do we move? Come on. We can, we don't let fear control you. It is a battle for control. Don't let fear control you. Fear is an expectation of something that is bad. Fear is an expectation of not the promises of God fulfilled, but just, you know, based on one preacher said, fear is the second name of the devil. Fear is an expectation of misery. And you and I cannot be allowed to control by fear. You and I cannot come under the counsel of fear. Why? Because fear, uh, fear, fear is uh, fear is a is a false evidence appearing real. Fear, F E A R, false evidence appearing real. It 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 confuses the truth. And you and I, you know, so many times we are trapped in the fear. As a result of us being trapped in the fear, we cannot become who? That fear puts a limitation upon us. And it is not, you know, you know, so many times in life we cannot fulfill. Why? Because we have that limitation of fear of, of what the devil has put over our life and not the word of God, the promises of God of our life. Don't let fear control you. Why? Because fear by nature will affect our lives. It will affect our emotions. And so many people with chronic problems, more than 80% of them, it is a result of fear and doubt and unbelief in their life. And you and I, we need to make the stand this morning. We've got to choose faith over fear. We've got to move from fear to faith. What did Jesus tell Jairus? In Mark chapter 5, verse 36. What did Jesus tell Jairus? You know, Jairus had come to Jesus desperate for a miracle. His daughter was, you know, critically ill. And then news comes to Jairus that his daughter had just died. He is completely devastated. He is, you know, he's going through a crisis above all crises. But what does Jesus tell him? You know, the Bible says in Mark chapter 5, verse 36, Jesus said this. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only believe. Wow! Do not be afraid, only believe. Two things. Do not be afraid. Don't allow fear to control you. Only believe. Stop fearing. Stop fearing of what you've heard. Stop fearing of the tragedy that you're going through. Stop fearing of the things that you don't understand. Stop fearing of the things that have happened and start believing. We need to believe. Come on, we need to take God and His Word. The Bible says if we can believe, all things are possible. The Bible says do not be afraid, only believe. And as, you, you know, as, as Jairus responded in faith, we allow Jesus to intervene. Why? Because God operates on the principle of faith. Faith 
positions us for the miraculous. And Jesus goes to his home. Jesus clears out all the uh, negative people, the people that were fearful and all kinds of thoughts that he had. And Jesus speaks life into that girl. And he said to her, little girl, I say to you, arise. Power of God came upon her and she was raised from the dead. Do not be afraid. Only believe. Why? Because Jesus knew there is a battle that's going on in our life between faith and fear. And we need to believe. We've got to start believing and we've got to stop fearing. One preacher said this, fear is the devil's dark room where we develop our negatives. And as a result of fear, you know, people are just are so full of negatives. Fear is our self-reliance and we need to do, deal with that. Why? Because faith depends on God. Fear, uh, you know, wants to look at us, uh, wants to look at our ability to handle things. And you and I know it is God that must intervene. It is God that we depend upon. Fear destroys. Fear will destroy us. And so, please, oh people of God, you know, whatever you're going through in life, don't mess around with fear. The Bible says in Job chapter 3, verse 25, and this is what Job said, For the thing that I greatly feared has come upon me, and what I dreaded has happened to me. We've got to deal with fear. And so, do not be afraid. Don't let fear control you. We need to rise up in faith and believe God. In, Mark, in Matthew chapter 14, verses 13, 31, listen to this. But when Jesus, when, when Peter saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And then immediately Jesus stretched out his hand. And what did Jesus do? Caught him and said to him, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, and when they got into the boat, the Bible says the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. The fourth key is this. we got to cry out to God to help us. Whatever situation that we are in, we got to cry out to God to help us. Maybe a financial situation. Maybe it's an emotional situation. Maybe it's a family thing. Maybe, maybe we're just disillusioned. Maybe we are battling emotional things in our life. But we got to ask God to help us. Because fear would look at our self-dependence apart from God. What will faith do? Faith will cause us to believe God. Faith is activated by us praying. And we need to cry out to God to help us to save us. So people of God this morning, you and I, we, how do we move from fear to faith? We've got to stay connected with Christ. No? Come on, we've got to act on His Word. We've got to, we must not allow fear to control us. And we've got to cry out to God for help. Church, it is the choice that we make. As I look at each one of you, as I look at, as, you know, as, I, as, as I speak this, it is a choice. And it is a relationship with God. It's a choice. Why a choice to change our focus. A choice that you and I need to make. to uh, A choice to look at Christ and not the crisis. A choice for us to look at the promises and not the problem. A choice for us to look at the provider and not the problem. It's a choice that we've got to make. And it's an intentional choice. We need to choose to focus on the promises. We need to choose, we need to choose uh, to focus on the Word of God and allow, reread and meditate and allow the Word of God to permeate us and fuel the faith in us. It's a choice. We've got to choose faith so that our destiny will be fulfilled. And it is also a relationship. We've got to trust God. Remember, we've got to stay connected with Christ and we've got to trust God. In Romans 8.28, the Bible says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, who are called according to His purposes. It's a relationship. Come on, we, God is in complete control. Jesus sees everything in our life. Jesus, you know, Jesus sees, Jesus watches over us. When we are in the storm, Jesus walks to us. 
Jesus is there to help us when we are struggling with fear. Jesus picks us up. Jesus is there to help us. Listen to this. Now. When you are down to nothing, and some of us may feel that way, God is up to something. When you and I are down, when you and I are struggling with things in our life, come on, God is up to something, but you and I, we need to cry out to God. So this morning, I want to challenge you. Choose faith over fear. I want to challenge you to move from fear to faith. Do not be afraid. Only believe. Only believe. Don't uh, only believe. We need to only believe. Listen to this. Then. Don't let, don't let the fear of what could happen make nothing happen. And sometimes you are, I so crippled by fear. Don't let the fear of what could happen make nothing happen. And don't let, don't be trapped by fear. It is said that fear kills more dreams than failure. Don't be trapped by fear. This morning, rise up. And let's believe God to let's believe God for greater things. It is faith that pleases God. It is faith that will cause us to position us for the miraculous. Because the Bible says, if you can believe, all things are possible. The Bible says in John chapter eleven verse forty, did I not say to you that if you would believe, that you would see the glory of God? Hallelujah. The Bible speaks of a faith that we need. Our faith has made us well. The Bible says, the Bible speaks as you have believed, so let it be done. We got to believe God. Faith causes us. Faith causes us to. Uh, faith causes us to walk through the storm. Faith causes us to see uh, healings and miracles take place. Now. Faith positions us for the miraculous. Now. And as you and I have put our faith in the promises of God, God will see us through. Because. God will always honor His word. Hallelujah. Before we take some time to pray, we're going to serve communion. And so if you've got emblems, uh, just bring it. As we serve communion, I want you to expect God to do a powerful work in your life. I'm going to read you a portion of scripture in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Listen to this now. The Bible says this, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So what does it say? we got to stay connected. Why? Because Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Come on, Jesus endured the cross. Jesus, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. He seated at the right hand of the Father. He paid the price for each one of us. And our response is that we need to look, stay connected with Jesus. Because he is the author and finisher of our faith. As you hold the emblems in your hands, we're going to pray. And then after that, we're going to release a, a, a prophetic prayer over each one of us, over your families, over us as a church. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this message. Lord, it is your word that is living and powerful. It is your word that brings forth change in our life. It is the Lord, every word that you have spoken will come to pass. It shall not return to you void. And today, even as we stand here holding the emblems, Lord, we know, God, that indeed 2,000 years ago, Jesus, you died on the cross for us. Lord, the provision that we can experience now is because what you provided for us. You, God, at Calvary took our sorrows that we can have joy. You took our confusion that we can have peace. You took our death that we can experience life. You took our sicknesses that we can experience healing. You took our rejection that we can experience acceptance. You took our curses. Oh God, that we can experience blessings of God. And today, even as we hold the emblems in our hand, Lord, we just want to thank you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this bread that speaks about the broken body of Jesus Christ. Thank you that your body was broken. You paid the ultimate price for our life. God, that in, for, so that each one of us can experience your life. Lord Jesus, today, God, we present our lives to you. 
God, we want to be people that will walk in faith. God, we want to be people that will walk, God, that will choose faith and not faith. We want to be people that will believe you, God. And Lord, we ask, Father God, even today that you bless this bread. We thank you. In Jesus' name, let's partake of the bread. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this cup that speaks about the broken, that speaks about the blood of Jesus. Thank you for this cup, Lord. Jesus, it is your precious blood that sets us free. It is your precious blood that washes us from our sin. It is your precious blood that made it possible for us to walk in faith. It is your precious blood that as a result of that, we have access to God the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you broke every bondage of sin over our life through your precious blood. And even this morning, Lord Jesus, we ask you, God, to bless this cup. We thank you in Jesus' name. Let's partake of the cup together. Hallelujah. Every hand lifted up. Father God, we just want to thank you. We thank you for your promises. We thank you that which you have spoken, that which you have done at Calvary. God, we appropriate that into our lives. And God, God, even this morning, we want to believe you. God, we have made a decision today not to be, Lord, to stop fearing and start believing. God, we have made a decision today, God, to stay connected with Christ, to act on your word. Father God, to not to fear, God, to cry out to you for help. And in Jesus' name today, as we stand before you, God, we ask God for divine intervention. Even this, uh, even this, uh, this morning, I want you to say this prayer with me. Hallelujah. Let's say this together. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you. Lord Jesus, I love you and I need you. I know that you love me and that you watch over me. Jesus, this morning, I surrender my life to you. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Lord Jesus, today, I receive you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. And Lord Jesus, I ask God that you will bless me and that you will help me. Lord Jesus, I pray God that even today, God, that in, I ask you for your divine intervention in my life. I present all my needs to you and by faith I believe and by faith I receive in Jesus' name. Amen. And God, even this morning, I want to commit your people into your living hands. And Lord, I ask Father God that even today, God, for a miracle touch. I pray in Jesus' name, Father God, every fear, uh, every fear producing circumstance in Jesus' name, I rebuke that. I rebuke God, that even not the spirit of failure, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. I rebuke unforgiveness and bitterness in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I come against Lord lack and you know struggling with infirmities and sicknesses in Jesus' name. I come against disillusionment and depression in Jesus' name and discouragement in Jesus' name. And Father God, that even this morning I speak, God the power of God over your people that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly. I speak, God, that with you nothing is impossible. God, that with you all things are possible. And didn't you say, if we can believe, all things are, are possible to them that believe. And I speak over in every impossibility. And I speak the power of God. I speak the power of God to invade. And Lord, in Jesus' name, I speak. Father God, right now, a divine intervention over every situation in each one of our lives. Lord, over our families, I speak, Lord, the favor of God. Over our church, we speak the favor of God. We speak the God of every situation in our life. We thank you in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. And Amen. And Amen. What a joy it is this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, that we can move from, from fear to faith. And we've got to choose, love. We need to make right choices. And I want to challenge you, focus on some of the scriptures that I've sent you on WhatsApp. Focus, you know, get the word of God. It is the word of God that will bring change. 
and and you know have a great week if there's anything that you need stay connected with us do connect us call us and we look forward to seeing you again next week amen for another faith full faith filled message god bless you see you next week